Hello, lovely people. Um, here I am on your um, Facebook Solutions Live, Yoga Solutions Live. Um, yes, so, so I'm in the middle of a, um, a garden yoga week, having a lovely time. Uh, it's, it's so nice to hang out in my garden. It's so nice to invite people to my space. Um, so I, this is why I'm starting a bit early today. So let's see, Corinna. Um, I can make live tomorrow, great. Oh, good morning, Corinna. Um, I request how to work with short, tense hamstrings. Okay, here we go. So uh, I'm presuming everyone can hear me. Um, I think my microphone's working. I had a bit of a technical crisis this morning. Um, yes, so short, tight hamstrings. So if, that, if that's your um, experience of your hamstrings, Corinna, I would I would start with um, uh, if it was my hamstrings. Let's, let's put it that way. If it was my hamstrings being tight, um, I would start by asking myself the question: What are they being tight for? Because um, muscles don't do things for no reason. Um, and I'll give you an answer if you like. Um, the hamstrings would be tight for precisely what they feel like they're doing. They're, they're trying to restrict your movement. Um, Hang on a sec, I've got some music going on in the background and I thought it'd be pleasant, but it's uh, distracting me, so I'm going to stop it. Hang on a sec. There we go. <laughs> yes. Um, yes, so uh, the question is, why would they be tight? Because uh, the, the muscle doesn't, uh, the, the body doesn't randomly, no, stay away from my microphone, cat. Um, the the m muscles and um, don't randomly hold tension for no reason. Uh, there's always a reason. And um, some, some of the subtler, deeper tensions can be um, related to um, emotional states and other things. But um, mostly hamstrings, the, super, the superficial muscles, mostly. Um, if they're holding tension and they're restricting movement, it's because that's what you're asking them to do. Um, it's the idea that the muscles are in the way of your movement that might be the problem. And um, this is a generic way of looking at yoga that is totally oppositional to how most people see it. Um, so for anyone out there that um, disagrees with this, okay, um, I'm sorry, but um, um, stretching muscles that seem to be getting in the way of what you're doing is not necessarily the best approach. Because if you ask the question, what is that muscle trying to do? You know, why, why is it restricting my movement? The answer is because the body is intelligent and, and it's, um, it's, it's restricting, restricting your movement because you're pulling on the hamstrings. <laughs> um, so this whole idea of stretch stretching errant muscles that seem to be restricting your movement. No, um, they are supporting you. So um, I, I'll, I'll give you an example, I'll, I'll show you. Um, let's see, if I, if I do, a, if I do a, a normal sort of stretchy forward bend where I reach down, uh, what, I'm, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to pull on these, on these straps behind me. I'm trying to pull on them to try and get close to the ground. And um, what they are actually doing is when I'm in forward bend, in, in reality, the, the, um, the functional relationship of hamstrings in forward bend is that their innate tensile sort of um, strength, if you like, is that which I rest into for support. So to try and to try and forcibly stretch them is 
going to cause them to pull back to stop me from doing that. <laughs> um, no, uh, you might might say, well, um, I'm reasonably flexible, so um, so there's no uh, so it's easy for me to say this, um, but it kind of depends on on um, how you do it. Um, the, the, the reason I'm reasonably flexible is because I'm not trying, I'm not working in a way where the hamstrings are supporting me with, with tension and I'm pulling against the hamstrings. Um, they've become pliant, compliant, because I don't, um, if I want the hamstrings to elongate, I, I mustn't carry my weight with them so much. You know, what I need to do is support myself through my joints from the, from the ground up. And if I, if I engage with my touch so that I'm supported upwards through my joints, then the hamstrings will perform their natural task of just um, being a, a sort of line of support for me to rest back into as my heels drop. If I, if I try and stretch them, then the act of stretching makes them tense. So it's just, um, you know, the agonist-antagonist idea. So um, it's, it's about the way you do it. It's not so much that the hamstrings are doing anything wrong. Um, so what, what we'll do, I think, um, to get this across, um, there's others of you uh, watching there, so um, say hi. Let me know who, who's there. Um, yes, and I've got, um, oh, I've done well. I've, I've explained myself in five minutes or so. Good. I'm, I'm glad that's helping already. But we're, what we'll do is we'll do a reclining leg stretch where you're not sort of required to take your weight through your legs to show you how it works. Okay. And it, it's like, it's like um, any restriction in movement. It's not the muscles and tissue that are wrong. Hi, Alan. Good to meet you. Good to see you, mate. Um, the muscles and tissue are responding to precisely what you're doing. So if you want, hi Max, um, if, if you want the hamstrings to allow greater range of movement, what you need to do is not pull on them. You need to um, get the forces of support to go back through the bones and joints in a confluent way, in a non-aggressive way, so that the joints don't have to brace against what you're doing. And then when you do that, the, the musculature slackens off because it's not required to protect you. Okay, so what I'll do is um, I'll set it up for a reclining. I don't want to call it a leg stretch. It's um, a more accurate term for it would be um, sort of, you know, leg stretch, hip openers. Ugh. Um, they, they make people pull on muscles. Um, what, what it is is an integration, integration of the joints of the leg. And in, in integrating the joints of the leg, the, the outcome is better range of movement. So let's see. So maybe watch for a second so I can demonstrate. <coughs> so, yeah. <coughs> yes, I'm on a nice white background so you can see what happens. Okay, so if... Um, most people, when they do leg stretches, um, they pull the muscles tight here to try and extend their legs, uh, to extend the backs of the knees. So they're in a sort of fight between the action of straightening the leg and the action, uh, the resistance of the hamstrings that are basically um, being pulled on by that action. Um, and yes, I can do it reasonably successfully. Um, but then they, they also take hold of the foot and try and pull, pull on the calf muscle as well. And um, yes, I can do that reasonably successfully as well. But it's not, it's not, it's not what leg stretches are. Um, it, it might be what leg stretches are, but it's not something that would integrate the legs. If you can get your x-ray specs on and tune into where the bones are and how the lines of support travel through the bones. Um, also, you need to be able to sort of see into the spaces inside here, inside the belly, okay? 
So, um, because you need to get get an idea of where the spine is and where the pelvic bones are, because you know all that stuff that we're trying to stretch, it's it's muscular clutter, it's tension, and it's resisting what you're doing. So, if if you're going to um, find uh, a range of movement that is free free of that stuff, what you need to tune into is bones and spaces between bones. If you're experiencing the relationships between things as space, then there is not tension. So that's what you need to take your attention to, the spaces between things. And the way you experience that is through breathing, okay? So here we go. So on a, on a practical level, um, so there's my hamstring attaches to underneath the knee and all the way up to the pelvis, okay? Um, it's nothing to do with the hamstring. The hamstring is one of the straps that is over the, this uh, series of bones and joints, okay? So instead of pulling on the muscles at the back, if I find an angle and I've got my knee turned out so that, so that I can have the foot close in, that helps, make, makes it easier to find lines of support. Um, what I'm trying to do is trying to relax. So um, my foot is in, in the air as a, in a sort of karate chop style. So it's not just a dead floppy thing. The foot is expressing into, into the air a little. And from that, okay, so I was hearing a, a buzzing noise. It's um, next door. Um, yes, so the foot is engaging with space in air so that it's um, um, expressing. And then from that, I can just relax. I can relax my shoulders. So there's no amount of pull with the arm muscles. It's just the only thing that gives me um, a towards me feeling is the relaxed weight of my wings and the feeling of maybe collecting myself together through my wings so that my heart can open up. Okay, That's, that's all the arms are doing. They are not pulling at the elbows. That's an aggressive action. And the precision, the, de the detail of how I'm holding, apart from the resting back, it's not to um, it's not to try and stretch anything. It's to try and sort of feed back through the lines of support. So from my foot, I kind of feed back into the ankle and towards the heel, so that the ankle can relax. Okay, and then from the ankle, I kind of feed back to where the knee is, so that the knee can relax. Okay. And then from where the knee is, I kind of feed back to where the hip joint is, in here somewhere. It's near the sit bone on the side. And you know, so my, and my hand is doing that. It's, it's, uh, as well as sort of resting back, there's a feeling of guiding back through where the joints are. And as I feed back into myself, the, the muscles around the joints can relax, particularly the hip. Because the, the thing that makes the um, hamstrings tense is when you start pulling nastily on the hip or the base of the spine. Okay. So I'm feeding back into the, into the thigh bone and from the thigh bone into the pelvis and from the pelvis into this space, this breathing space in here. And when, when I can allow space between the thigh bone and me um, through the change of the breath, then I get more space between my thigh bone and me. And when I release the breath, that space sort of becomes contained. And it's in that release that the spine gets a little bit closer, sacrum gets a little bit closer to the foot through the pelvis. Okay. So if you've got that going on, um, with the spine a little bit closer to the heel through the joints, you might feel tension. But actually, that tension is just support, and you'll find, with the spine closer to the heel, you don't have to stretch it by kicking away. What you do is you let the leg move away from you in that direction, away from you to, towards the space behind you. So it's a bit like um, pulling back from the toes. Okay? So having fed in and put the joints together so that all the joints can relax, and connected to the breath within the, the lower belly, having fed inwards to connect through the joints into the breathing space 
in the lower belly so you can make more space between you and your leg. Having found that, you breathe across the heart. And as you release the breath, you press back into the ground, away from your foot, um, so that this space empties. And as that space empties, the spine, the, the sacrum, will come through the pelvis closer to the heel. And as it does so, there is less resistance to movement because the leg, so the leg can move away from you, not towards you. The leg, you're not trying to pull the leg towards you. You're trying to open the leg away from you into the space behind you. And you will meet the support of the hamstring with all that space between you and the leg. If you've done it from opening the heart, then there'll be no compromise of the spine whatsoever because the heart will have come through with the release of the breath and the leg will be moving away from you. So you'll feel a stretch, but you won't be stretching. You'll be using the support. Good. So, um, yes, I have five minutes. <laughs> Any questions? So uh, I hope that was useful, Corinna. It's one of my... Um, Leg integration is one of my favorite things to do because um, you've, got, you've got the nice template of the earth beneath you for the spine. Um, uh, because you've got the ground and you can work out how to give the limb back to yourself so that you stop pulling it off you. And in that uh, reintegration with the spine, the spine starts to free up. And when the spine frees up and the breath frees up, then, um, then um, it gives you the space to do what you need to do. Yes, it is hard work, Corinna. Um, why? It's not at all hard work to tense one muscle to make the other one tense. All you're doing is squishing a couple of muscles temporarily. Um, and you might be compressing a joint in the process. So you're not doing yourself that much good. If you want to release this in inverted commas issue, it's the whole body that has to change. The hamstring was doing nothing wrong. It's the whole body that needs to change. And it's this that makes me think that um, treating the body in this way is something to do with yoga. <laughs> you know, we're, we're, we're trying to arrive in a place of wholeness. And the answer to your hamstring problem, which isn't one, is that the whole body had a relationship that caused to itself, that caused the hamstrings to... Um, restrain your movement. The whole body has to learn how to open up in a way that doesn't create that complication. So the outcome is the whole person has to integrate with the hamstrings if you want to sort your hamstrings out. If it's a neck problem, you don't do stuff to your neck. It's the whole person. The, the relation, it's a relationship between your head and the rest of your body. Okay. If you want to sort out the neck, the whole person has to change its relationship to the neck. If you want to sort out your shoulders, you don't do stuff to your shoulders. It's the whole person and their relationship from the neck and head up, from the ribs and body down, um, your, your wings, uh, your shoulders in relationship to space through the hands. It's the whole person engaging with space and engaging with touch that will sort your shoulders out. You don't do stuff to your shoulders. I hope that makes it clear. It's um, it's the other way around from how the rest of the world seems to do things. Um, it seems to just make sense to me, but um, I don't know. This has been my speciality for. It's all I've done for twenty five years or so, is work out the language of the body. So. Um, and, and, you know, my teacher told me, go away and work with this stuff. And the, the way you work it out is by seeing what works. And I've, you know, and stretching doesn't. I've seen people stretch and stretch and stretch. They never get satisfied. They never get to the place where they feel free because they're stretching their support. So all that happens is they feel unsupported at best. Okay. So anyway, uh, that's, my, that's my take on things. Uh, I have one minute left. Uh, the, the bell going meant I had two, so I have one minute left. Um, I have people turning up at any minute now for my garden yoga. Um, so I will sign off. 
Um, I, I've got another week in my garden coming up, uh, the second week of August. Um, yes, thank you, Corina. Yes, it's good to have that validated. Stretching doesn't work. Um, doesn't seem to. I mean, I'm, I'm not talking about pandiculation. You know, yawn and a stretch, perfect. That's, it's a natural thing. Uh, but pulling on yourself to try and reorganize your body into something better is like like ripping up the canvas of a tent to make it fit around a, a, a wonky structure. Doesn't it? It's not what you want to do. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so I, yes, I've got another garden yoga week. Um, uh, in It's the third week of August, uh, so, so, it, so it's the 14th to 18th. There's still a couple of spaces, I think, um, book online on the Aquaviva website. I think there's a Facebook event somewhere. Um, yes, and uh, I, I think I might keep I might keep it to ten o'clock for next week as well, just to because I'll need to do it for the week after. So I'll keep the live for ten o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday. And um, any Aquaviva students out there, hopefully I'll see you tonight on on Zoom. So um, lots of love to you. I am Mark J Aquaviva of the Aquaviva School of Yoga. This has been your yoga live yoga your live yoga solutions spot. Um, I shall see you next week. Namaste.